Yes, welcome back. It is Up FM. It is the uh, Backtrack Show, Dance Music's Radio Retro Show. We're going to take a break from the tunes to have a quick chat with uh, Mr. Jay Bulletproof. Uh, Jay, are you there at the moment? Yeah, mate. How you going? Oh, I'm not bad at all. First of all, I want to give you a big old uh, intro. Now, for well over a decade, the name Bulletproof has forged his name as one of New Zealand's premier producers, in particular in the drum and bass field. Record label executive for Cyanide Records, travelling all over the country on a regular basis, and recently winning the award for the best NZ drum and bass DJ at the 2010 Nightlife Awards. Jay Bulletproof, good to have you on the phone, my man. Uh, that was an intro. Well done, right? Uh, uh, that's all good. Now, first of all, you've been doing the whole DJing thing for about 16 years, is that right? Yep, yep. How did it all begin for Bulletproof? Um, I went to a rave when I was a kid uh, down in Wellington. I saw a guy called Aaron play, who's um, Aaron Stradwick, was one of the, pretty much the original drum and bass jungle DJ in New Zealand and um, yeah I was hooked pretty much I'd heard quite a few rave tapes and stuff like that but it wasn't until I'd actually been to a, a party and seen someone playing it live and heard it and felt it and experienced it myself that I was you know I became hooked and uh, yeah ever since then I've been doing it so back then was it all about the, the jungle stuff or the old like old school rave hardcore stuff um, it was a mixture of like reinforced recording suburban bass and um, you know four hero and stuff like that um, mixed with quite a lot of the early movie shadow stuff like um, Two Bad Mice and all these other guys that were just doing this quite dark atmospheric and moody sound and I was really into it eh? it was it, it just caught me you know I, was, I came from grunge and all that sort of stuff it was the only music that I found was a similar energy if not more vibrant you know so that was it I was hooked and when did the production side of it when did the, the real bulletproof production side of it come into it um, I made my first tune in 1995, um, but it wasn't until 98 when I, I met up with my old production partner Josh down in Wellington and we sort of locked ourselves away in a bedroom in uh, Wellington for about three days and just sort of tried to make some drum and bass just on drum machines, a shitty old sampler and quite a lot of vintage analog synths and um, that kind of that was the start for me but it wasn't until the end of 99 when both Josh and I moved back down to Christchurch um, just coincidentally at the same time and I was playing a party and he he was like man I'm living down here now I was like well awesome I've just moved down here too to start a club night so that was that we started uh, getting in on speech and technology had sort of moved forward a, a couple of steps by then so um, yeah we were able to sort of set up a, a decent studio pretty cheaply and um, and lock ourselves away once again and start and um, yeah we did a couple of tracks and then DJ Pressure um, sort of picked up on us and um, yeah that was the start of Bulletproof we got, had our first signing to his Subtronics label then um, our first international signing to uh, Perspective Records which was um, the home of Cause Concern back at those days um, and that was just at the very start of 2000 so um yeah, from there on, it was um, it was a uh, pretty plain sailing. Knew exactly what we were up to. And bulletproof now. Is it still two people, or is it just yourself on your own? Uh, it's just me. Um, I I had a son in 2002, and I kept on DJing until 2003. But I, I needed to sort of take some time off and just um, just be a dad for a little bit. So I moved away up to the far north and um, Josh sort of took over the reins for a, a year and then he got sick of it running the label by himself and he wasn't really producing tunes by himself. So, and we'd run out of back catalogue that, um, that we had sitting sitting there. So Josh was like, well, you can either shut the label down or um, he can take it back on. And I was kind of like at that stage at the end of my tether living in the far north and decided to come back and kick off again and make it happen now you've <laughs> been uh, you've been doing pretty darn well for yourself it's it's fair to say and it's been uh, two years since your uh, was it your first album dark times desperate measures no that, that was my second album um the first album was shake the foundations um which was a compilation of some of my um biggest tunes from 2000 to 2007 it came out um on uprising a lot of those tracks have been released before uh, on vinyl, but um, not the CD format. Uh, yeah, we made a few collaborations as well, me and Conkle Dawn and um, a couple other people, just exclusively for the album. 
No, Dark, Dark Times Disrupt Midgets came out 2008, and um, yeah, that was that was cool. Three 12 inches and CDs and digital downloads. Did the whole lot. Now I've had a real quick, quick listen to the new album, and it's quite a change in tempo from, uh, in particular, Dark Times Desperate Measures in certain aspects. Uh, what was the thought process that went into the new album? Um, well, I kind of, I, I, the last album, Dark Times Desperate Measures, I was consciously making dubstep. I'd, I'd, I'd already been bitten by the dubstep bug, and I was kind of liking how I could employ my drum and bass techniques of production within the realms of dubstep um, and to be honest like the response to the dubstep in some respects especially from radio was far more favourable towards the dubstep than it was the drum and bass because obviously the title of that track uh, that album sort of gives you an indication about what it was it was quite moody dark drum and bass and quite grindy dancehall stuff and um, so was the dubstep but the dubstep was a little bit more accessible for people so I just thought try something different and work with some musicians and you know sort of come up with a new musical direction personally just just for my own personal um, satisfaction I guess you could say yep. and just to prove myself that I could do other genres of music you know like I've, I've done some stuff um, as you know uh, Tokyo Street Gang, which you were saying before, which is, um, you know, it's a it's a musical offshoot, and that's actually stemmed from doing dubstep. So it's just allowed me to be a lot more creative and a lot more musical, and um, yeah, that's, that's why I enjoy producing dubstep. Now, the new album is called Soundtrack to Forever. Where did the name come from? Or where's the inspiration behind the name? Um, oh, I just, it was kind of like... I, when I named the album, I was kind of like, you know, if this album doesn't do well, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to walk away from music and, I don't know, become a butcher or something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, so hopefully it was my soundtrack to forever. So, you know, if this album does well, then I'll be able, I'll, I'll keep on producing. and well, I'm never going to stop anyway. It was just like the headspace I was in at the, at the time. But, um, yeah, I, I just wanted it. it it's... I wanted the album to have music on there that's timeless. You could go back in five or ten years and listen to it and go, wow, that's, that's badass, that's banging, you know? It's quite forward-thinking for the genre, and, and as far as musicality goes, it's quite forward-thinking as well, you know? So. Yep, now, on the album, you've collaborated with a truckload of amazing local acts, including Tiki Tane, PNC, David Dallas Truth, Optimus Grime, uh, Bo Runga. Now, for you, who was the most exciting to work with? Um... Well, there's one guy you didn't mention there, uh, Rugged Techniques. Yep. Um, yeah, I was kind of pretty awesomely blown away by him when he came into the studio um, and just walked in, had a real sort of big night beforehand and he was feeling a bit feisty and, you know, he'd had a run-in with someone and he had he had all the shit that he needed to get out and he's like, where's the fucking microphone? And I was like, there you go, bro, where you go? And he just spat out verses. You can hear it on the album and it's... He did it in like two takes and I was like, wow, that's just fucking amazing. I've never had that sort of energy in the studio before. So I was kind of like, that really sort of got me amped and I was stoked and we've been doing heaps of work together since. And the name of the track on that one, is, is that Step Up or Step? Uh, Step To You. Step To You, that's it. So is that where the inspiration came from? Quite a, it's quite a UK sounding grime tune, yeah. Yeah, I, I've uh, had a listen to that. That was, that was sounding pretty fat as well. Yeah, 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 it goes good, off on the last one. It's a good tune. Works on the radio. Now, the first single off the album, funny enough, is called Soundtrack to Forever. It features uh, Tiki Tane. Um, the video looks amazing. Looks really, really cool. good. Now, what was the concept behind the video? Um, I approached Mark Williams, who plays this, uh, the bad guy in the, mo- in the video. Yes. Um, he also does all the Fat Freddy Drops uh, video. Yep. And... Um, I've known Mark since I was a kid, and him and Otis Frizzell got together and sort of drew up a storyboard. They just sort of sat around and had a beer and listened to the listened to the tune and sort of came up with a storyboard. And they decided that something f- along the lines of like the Reservoir Dogs warehouse scene, yes, having you know little torture sequence and all that sort of stuff. So we went with that and tried to tame it down and insinuate violence rather than sort of actually show sort of people getting hit and all that sort of shit. Yep. And um, yeah, pulled it off. I love it. I think it's awesome. It's one of my favourite videos that I've done. So yeah, it's pretty cool. 
And finally, before I let you go, for those wanting to follow in the footsteps of Bulletproof and get singles, albums, music videos, all that good stuff released, what advice do you have for those people? Um, don't give your music away for free. <laughs> and uh, make sure you maintain control of your music at all times. And never do anything without a contract. Because the fact that we're in New Zealand doesn't make us special. It means that we're so far away from the people who are um, who are handling our business for us that quite often they can take you for a ride and you don't even realise it. You know, so to be business wise, and you've got to you know just be just be smart about your music. And if a good tune's a good tune, it doesn't matter um, how it's how it's sort of portrayed. A good tune is a good tune, and if people like it, people will play it. And um, you don't need record labels or anyone else telling you how to um, how to sort of promote your music and take all your money away from you. you. Your best bet is to do it all by yourself and try and start a digital label first and, yeah. Make it happen that way. Make it happen, yeah, because a lot of people, they see what you're up to and they see the amount of energy you're putting into something and they'll try and take advantage of it. But then you'll get a few people who are just totally there to help you and that's luckily enough the people that I've um, come across with dirty management and um, they they you know they, they push you rather than take advantage of you and that's that's the key some yep. people are out there just to make money for themselves some people are out there to help you make money people that are yeah. passionate about the music not about how much uh, or how well they can line their pockets as such exactly oh that's good there isn't, there isn't much money in it you know yep, def- not in New Zealand no. especially for a, um, a producer a lot of the money you make unless you're selling like you know top 10 singles and all that sort of stuff um, a lot of the money you make will um, come from touring and that's that's the great thing about being a producer and being a DJ is that you actually get to fly around the world and play your music to people and that's one of the things that um, keeps me going you know like I I look forward to the fact that I'm going to be taking off to Japan next month to go and release the album and then back to Europe to go and play all the drum and bass side of things and all that sort of stuff so as well, are you still are you still just as excited about drum and bass as you are about dubstep at the moment? Absolutely, man. Look, yeah, I've had quite a few people go, "Oh, so you're into dubstep now?" And I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I'm into dubstep, but I, I still produce drum and bass like wholeheartedly, and that's my bread and butter, and always has been, and always will be." And you know, there's nothing quite like busting out a good drum and bass tune here and there. And I've got heaps of stuff coming out, which is you know, tracks on Concord Dawn's album, plus tracks on my own label, Cyanide. Plus, we had a Sidechain 12 which come out on Syndrome Recordings worldwide last week, which is Sidechain is myself, Technic and Cern, yep. our little side project. And then I've also got, yeah, plenty of solo releases on different labels. Just making it all happen, pretty much. Yep. Yep, powerhouse. Musical yep. powerhouse. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, where can people buy Soundtrack to Forever? Um, it's available now on iTunes. Um, amplifier.co.nz and it's in all good record stores on the CD so go out there and buy it don't download it otherwise Bulletproof is going to come after you <laughs> yeah the CD is a 16 track CD and it's got most of my favourite cuts on it sort of the stuff that you can listen to when you go home or when you're driving or something like that plus all the quite a few big club tunes and the digital bundle has um, 22 tracks on it and they've got like um the extended versions. Yeah, there's extended mix of soundtrack to forever and instrumental mix, and then there's also some other club tunes on there, some dancehall tunes for DJs because DJs like their bundles. That they do. Now, where can it's, people? It's, um, it's number 46 in the charts at the moment. I need to get it to number 40, and then I can get funding for it. So go out and buy it, please. <laughs> there, you, there you got it from Bulletproof. Where can people uh, look up your, yourself on the internet if they want to find out more? If they maybe um, want a quick preview of the tracks. Yeah, um, you can search out on Facebook, um, just facebook.com slash bulletproofnz or myspace.com slash bulletproofnz and both the um, uh, audio, you're able to go and buy it from the Facebook page and the audio is available and the video is available on the uh, Myspace. So there you have it, Jay Bulletproof. Thank you very much for giving us the insight. Uh, And everybody, go out, buy uh, Soundtrack to Forever by Bulletproof. Jay, good to have you on the line. Thank you. Cool, thanks for having me, Nick. Sweet, buddy. Take it easy, eh? You too, man. Take it easy. There you go, a little bit of Jay Bulletproof. His new album, Soundtrack to Forever, 
is out right now. Go and get it. iTunes, amplifier.co.nz, or better still, rock it old school. Go down to your local music store and demand it. That was Bulletproof. This is Backtracks, Dance Music's Radio Retro Show.